Okay, in our video series of cardiology bootcamp lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about mitral stenosis. We are going to discuss the presentation and the causes of mitral stenosis. We are going to discuss the medical treatment as well as the surgical treatment of mitral stenosis. Our heart has four chambers. Two chambers on the right side, right atrium, right ventricles, and two chambers on the left left atrium and left ventricle between the left atrium and the left ventricle there is a valve called as mitral valve what happens in mitral stenosis is that this valve gets stenosed the circumference of this valve gets smaller therefore the blood cannot easily travel from the left atrium to the left ventricle that is called as mitral stenosis Mitral stenosis is a structural abnormality of the mitral valve resulting in decreased cross-sectional area. The cross-sectional area of the mitral valve is decreased and there is difficulty for the blood to pass from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Therefore, the blood is backed up in the lungs. This is a picture showing mitral stenosis. Look at the circumference of this heart valve. It has decreased. As we discussed in our heart failure video, that left side of the heart receives blood from the lungs. From the lungs, the blood enters the left atrium and from the left atrium, the blood enters the left ventricle, crossing the mitral wall. Then this left ventricle pumps this blood out through aorta to the whole body. Now, if there is mitral stenosis, there will be difficulty for the blood to enter from the left atrium to the left ventricle. So the blood will be pulled up in the left atrium and the left atrium size will increase. There will be left atrial enlargement. Then this blood will be backed up, pulled up in the lungs. And whenever the blood is pulled up in the lungs, there is pulmonary edema, there is pulmonary hypertension. And the patients will have the symptoms of dyspnea, hemoptysis, shortness of breath. A very common symptom of patients with a severe mitral stenosis is that patient will present to you with shortness of breath. Now, this simple basic physiology explains the symptoms. Patients will present to you with dyspnea, shortness of breath, fatigue, palpitations, heart will be trying to pump the blood more and more. And with that, remember that this is the heart and the left atrium, left atrium lies on the posterior aspect of the heart. And remember, left atrium forms the most posterior part of heart. And in the mitral stenosis, there is left atrial enlargement. This left atrial enlargement compresses the esophagus and it causes dysphagia. It compresses the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Therefore, it causes hoarseness of voice. So the left atrium enlargement causes compression of esophagus resulting in dysphagia, compression of left recurrent laryngeal nerve resulting in hoarseness that is called as Ortner syndrome. Symptoms due to left atrial enlargement include hoarseness due to compression of recurrent laryngeal nerve that is called as Ortner syndrome, dysphagia. Coming to the causes of mitral stenosis, in the causes of mitral stenosis, rheumatic fever is the most common cause. Usually the patients get rheumatic fever in their childhood and after 20 years, the patients get mitral stenosis. If someone asks you the most important cause, the most common cause of mitral stenosis, remember rheumatic fever as the most important and the most common cause. Then genital mitral stenosis can be there. Calcification, age-related calcification can also cause mitral stenosis. Bacterial endocarditis. I have talked about bacterial endocarditis in detail in my video on endocarditis treatment and management. You can check out the link in the description. Autoimmune SLE can cause mitral stenosis. Now coming to the auscultation findings in mitral stenosis. Remember, in the mitral stenosis, there will be a diastolic murmur. Why is there a diastolic murmur? Because whenever the left ventricle relaxes, at that time, atria contract and push the blood towards the left ventricle. So the heart, the left ventricle is relaxing at that time and blood is coming in from the left atrium. And at that point, there is difficulty due to mitral stenosis because the path is blocked, the path is stenosed. And you will listen to this murmur whenever the heart is in diastole. And it is best heard in the mitral space, the fifth intercostal space at the apex. And it is loudest when the patient lies on the left side and you put the steth on the mitral part and you listen to a diastolic murmur. This is how the murmur sounds like.
Now coming to the examination findings, what you would see in examination findings that the female who had a history of rheumatic heart fever comes to you with shortness of breath and that patient has a mitral phase, purple discoloration of the face due to impaired oxygenation because the left ventricle is not receiving blood properly and that left ventricle cannot push the blood, cannot perfuse the body organs properly. Therefore, there will be, there'll be a flushing purplish look on the face that is called as mitral phases. Irregular heart rate. Remember, in the left atrium, there is enlargement. There is change in shape of an, a left atrium. There is deformity of the left atrium due to increased size. Whenever there is change in shape, whenever there is deformity of the heart muscle, there are chances of arrhythmias to originate. Therefore, there are huge chances that patient will develop atrial fibrillation and that patient will have irregular heart rate. If you want to learn about uh, atrial fibrillation, I have talked about it in detail in my video on atrial fibrillation. The link of that video is in the description. Now coming to the diagnosis of mitral stenosis. In the diagnosis of mitral stenosis, remember, Echocardiography, transthoracic echocardiography is the best initial test. In echocardiography, what you see is that you look at the heart, you look at the valves and you look at the level of stenosis of heart valve. Remember, reduced mitral area, mitral valve circumference will be reduced. Mitral valve circumference less than 1.5 centimeter square is diagnostic for mitral stenosis and it is considered as severe mitral stenosis. Now, how do you grade severity of mitral stenosis? Now, it's not just the circumference, it's also the presence and absence of symptoms as well as pulmonary artery hypertension because the blood is being backed up in the lungs and there is pulmonary artery hypertension. Blood pressure in the pulmonary arteries is high. Wall pressure gradient, the difference between the pressure of left atrium and the left ventricle because the blood is not passing to the left ventricle. Mitral valve area, mitral valve circumference. If you do ECG in these patients, you would find irregularly irregular rhythm in the ECG. You will see a fib. You can also find right ventricular hypertrophy since the blood is being backed up in the lungs and whenever the blood is being backed up in the lungs, there will be pressure on the right ventricle, the right side of the heart. Because as I said that whenever there is pressure in the lungs, that pressure is backed up in the right side of the heart and the right side of the heart will result in core pulmonary right heart failure in the later stages. So the left-sided heart problem leads to the right-sided heart failure. On the chest x-ray, you will see left atrial enlargement and that would appear as a double density sign. This is a picture showing double density sign. Look, if you see clearly, there is one density present ahead and there is another density present at the back. This density is basically the left atrial enlargement. This is called as double density sign, two borders of the heart because at the back, the left atria has enlarged and that is forming another border of the heart. Now coming to the treatment of mitral stenosis, in the treatment of mitral stenosis, the first thing that you have to do is that you have to get the cardiology consult. After that, you can follow up the patient with serial transthoracic echocardiographies and you can start the patient on medical therapy. In medical therapy, what you do is that you control the rate. There is rate control in young patients. Lower heart rates provide increased diastolic filling time. Basically, what happens is that the left ventricle is not receiving enough blood from the left atrium because the mitral valve is stenosed and left atrium cannot send the blood to the left ventricle. Now, what if we slightly slow the heart down, there will be enough time for that somewhat little amount of blood to be filled up in the left ventricle. And when the heart contracts, that's, that amount of blood will be slightly more than when the rate of the heart is high. So you slow the heart down, you want the heart to fill up with blood for some time and then contract. We do not want the left ventricle to contract when it is empty. We want the heart to slow down a little bit and let it fill with some little amount of blood and then contract. So we do rate control in young patients and we increase the diastolic filling time. You can use metoprolol 50 to 100 mg a beta blocker per orally BD. You can also use ivabradine 5 to 10 mg per orally BD. 
Now, most likely these patients who are presenting to you with mitral stenosis have an enlarged left atrium. And if they are having enlarged left atrium, there is a chance that there, there will be irregularly irregular heart rate. They will have developed an irregular rhythm in the left atrium. There will be atrial fibrillation in the left atrium. Now, you need to control that atrial fibrillation with the rate control. In my video on atrial fibrillation, I talked about comparison of rate control and rhythm control. What is the difference between both of them? Remember, in atrial fibrillation, if the cause is structural change in the heart, as it occurs in mitral stenosis where there is enlargement of the left atrium, you should go for rate control because rhythm control is less effective if there is structural change in the heart tissue. Other than that, there are chances that these patients with mitral stenosis have developed enlarged atrium and that enlarged atrium is now producing irregular currents. It is causing atrial fibrillation. And if the left atrium is causing atrial fibrillation, it is seizing, it is seizing with electrical activity, it is contracting at an irregular rate, it is causing the blood to be more turbulent in it, and whenever the blood is turbulent, it causes production of clots. And those clots are formed in the heart due to atrial fibrillation, due to irregular contraction of the atria. You give anticoagulation to avoid those clots so that those clots do not enter the brain and cause stroke. So you give anticoagulation with warfarin and you maintain an INR of 2.5. Anticoagulation is indicated if there is atrial fibrillation, if there is history of embolic disease where you want to stop the emboli from forming again, and if there is intracardiac thrombus to stop the formation of thrombus, if there is mechanical prosthetic valve. In all these cases, if the patient is having mitral stenosis, you give anticoagulation with warfarin. Now, in which patients do you go for interventional therapy? Interventional therapy means the surgical treatments. Now, interventions are done when the patient is having severe symptoms. And with the symptoms, dyspnea, shortness of breath with the symptoms patient is having mitral valve area less than or equal to 1.5 centimeters square the mitral valve circumference is small and if the patient is having symptoms dyspnea shortness of breath but the mitral valve area is greater than 1.5 centimeter in that case if the patient is having hemodynamically significant mitral stenosis on stress test when the patient starts doing exercise patient starts to develop pulmonary hypertension even the mitral valve area is slightly bigger, but the patient is having symptoms and on the stress test, you elicited that patient develops symptoms. In that case, you also go for intervention. If the patient is asymptomatic and the mitral valve area is less than 1.5 cm square with pulmonary artery pressure greater than 50 mm of Ag, if the patient is not having any symptoms and the mitral valve area is small, in that case, you see pulmonary artery pressure. If the pulmonary artery pressure is greater than 50 mm of Hg, which means that the patient is having pulmonary hypertension, but the patient has not yet developed any symptoms, but after some time, the patients will be developing severe symptoms because there is pulmonary artery hypertension and it will also damage the right side of the heart. The patient is asymptomatic, but in future, the patient can develop severe disease, severe complications of this condition. Or if the patient has new onset atrial fibrillation, even if the patient is asymptomatic and the mitral stenosis area is less than 1.5, in that case, you also go for interventional therapy. In the interventional therapy, you have percutaneous mitral valve balloon commissurotomy, a very interesting procedure in which you pass a probe, in which you pass a wire through the veins and you get inside the left atrium and from the left atrium, you pass it through the left ventricle. And over here, you inflate the balloon in the mitral wall and you cause it to open. You break the commissures and you uh, increase the circumference of mitral wall. That is called as percutaneous mitral wall balloon commissurotomy. Balloon inflated to break open the commissural stenosis. Now, this is a preferred procedure. But some patients have unfavorable anatomy of the valve that does not favor this procedure or if the patient is having mixed valvular disease, if the patient is also having problems with the tricuspid valve and the patient is also having problems with the mitral valve, so there are more than one valves involved, in that case mitral balloon uh, commissurotomy is not done. In that case surgery is performed. Other than that, if the patient is having any thrombus or clot in the left side of the heart, you cannot pass this probe because there is a risk that you can dislodge that clot and that clot can enter brain and cause stroke. 
So if it is a mixed valvular disease in which more than one valve is involved, if the anatomy is unfavorable for percutaneous mitral valve balloon commissurotomy, or if the, there is thrombus lying in the heart, left side of the heart, you cannot go for percutaneous balloon commissurotomy. You have to go for open surgery. Complications of mitral stenosis include atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, pulmonary hypertension. In summary, we talked about what is mitral stenosis, the symptoms, dyspnea, Ortner syndrome, dysphagia, the causes, rheumatic fever being the most common cause, auscultation, diastolic murmur on the mitral area, examination finding mitral faces, irregular heart rate, transthoracic echocardiography, the best initial test. And if someone asks you about the most confirmatory test, it is transesophageal echocardiography in which you get inside the esophagus and look at the heart. ECG showing AFib, chest X-ray showing double density sign, cardiology consult, start medical therapy, rate control in young patient, treat the AFib with rate control, anticoagulation with warfarin if there are these conditions, interventional therapy in these cases, interventional therapy, surgery and percutaneous balloon commissurotomy and the complications. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on cardiology bootcamp lectures and emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.